Can Evil Knievel's son avenge his death-defying crash of 1967 when he tempted fate by jumping the fountains at Caesar's Palace? That is the question which will be answered on April 14th when Robbie Knievel leaps across those same fountains the jump will be televised on Showtime event television. That was pretty dramatic, don't you think? Uh, please welcome Evil Knievel and Evil Knievel 2, Robbie Knievel. Oh, how you doing? Just fine, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Now, now, do I call you Robbie or do I call you Evil Two? Robbie. Robbie. All right, that's correct. <laughs> now, I don't know if you listened to this introduction, but your dad didn't make it across this thing. He was unconscious for 30 days or 31 or whatever the count was. Why do you want to do this, Robbie? First of all, um, I was born into it, and uh, there's been a, a lot of guys trying this. I grew up with it. I love what I'm doing. I grew up with a motorcycle, yeah. and I'm very proud to keep a name. It still holds the number one spot in the history of ABC Wide World of Sports to this day. Yeah. Uh, well, going. Now, how, how long was that jump you tried to make? When I jumped it, it was about 140 feet. Robbie will probably jump somewhere between 160 and 200 feet. But mm -hmm. there's... Uh, but, but again, I point out, if you were listening to my introduction, you, you, didn't, you didn't quite make that. Now you're, now you're adding some more. Now, no, now, but I did that on purpose. <laughs> just, just to, to hype his. Because I knew that, I knew that 26 years later I'd have a son, and then maybe he could try it, and yeah. everything would work out all right for and me. And you don't, you think he's going to be okay? This was well, a serious accident. I mean, this was not just a little bump. There have head. been uh, many children, many young kids in the world try to uh, pay me a compliment, what I consider a compliment, to, to do what I do. There's kids riding bicycles down, jumping. Oh. There have been six or seven motorcycle jumpers that have been killed which I'm not too proud of, mm -hmm. trying to do jumps like this. There have been two or three ended up as paraplegics or pelagics in wheelchairs. Yeah. Uh, this is a dangerous jump. The Caesars Palace jump actually has got to be the most dangerous jump in the world. When you go to a racetrack and try and make a jump, you go down around the ramp and around the cars and you test your speed. You're on the parking lot here. That's aren't right. You? When yeah. you go to Caesars Palace, there is a absolute fountain in front of you and there's no absolutely no practice run you can make at it. When he goes out there, yeah. he's committed. First time. What, what is this? This is the helmet that was... Don't show a, Robbie. Well, this is, a, <laughs> this is a helmet that was manufactured in the United States here 20-some years ago. And this is a helmet that I had on when I jumped Caesar's Palace. Oh, and, uh, it it did save my life, bit, yeah. but if it, uh, it, I only used it once. Yeah. How do you it, feel about the, the laws? Do you think we ought to, uh, motorcyclists should have to wear helmets? Gary Busey doesn't, even after the accident. Well, can lead a horse to water, you can't make him drink. Mm. So uh, the answer is yes. I feel uh, really, uh, we got another helmet back yeah, here. Let yes, me show sir. you the difference. In, well, in, this is the new improved? Uh, well, in 21 years of, this helmet here is uh, made in, this was made in the United States. This one I think is made in Italy, it's mm -hmm. called the Nolan. And this helmet, if this helmet would have had the liner in it, yeah. and the air vents and everything that this beautiful helmet has, it would have been a little different. I would there. not have been rendered unconscious for yeah. 31 days. I so, Robbie, been... when you get dressed, it's this one, the That's one right. without the scratches. Yeah. This, right. this can, one is the one that I want him to wear, right. I'll tell you can, that. Can we show a, a piece of tape here? Can we have a look right over here? Uh, what are we going to see here, Evil? Well, I don't know which clip we have a couple in. of jumps. Whoop, what is... This, is... this is the last jump I did in Portland, Oregon, the 22 cars with no hands. Wow. This, that is, was a... this is when he broke my world record, and that's when he jumped in the Houston Astrodome with a car coming head on at him. The car took off of the uh, takeoff ramp, and he jumped over the car in midair and went over the top. Now, how do you, seriously, how do you practice something like this? You, you can't just uh, go over to the parking lot there at Caesars and say, you folks move over here. Uh, well, right now, I'm, uh, I'm testing a lot of different bikes, Japanese products, an American product. Harley wants to build me a bike, Harley Davidson. I'm going to Daytona and uh, to meet with them for the Daytona 200, and I'm just testing a lot of bikes out in the desert every day. I do like 30-minute <laughs> intervals racing and real hard racing and then I take breaks and that's well, how, how I've ridden they, bikes all my life. But. How do other people in your life feel about this? I mean like the women in your life for example. 
like my little girl. <laughs> how, how, yeah, family. She's sure. not old enough to know anything. But uh, my wife I met a long time ago, and my worst accidents were when I was a teenager. And uh, so she's never really seen me get hurt. So oh. she's like, oh, he's got it under control. And as long as he makes it to the other side and gets the page. Well, I, would, I, would, I would think mom would be concerned, uh, uh, particularly after, after what happened to you. Now, and, and you're a dad. You must be concerned, too, right? Well, I am concerned. There's... I'll um, talk him out of it, Evil. There's still time. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I just he's, there's a lot of money to be made here. Oh, there, oh, you get paid for this. He's chosen his own way of life. Uh, Robbie and I make our living. Uh, I have made my ri living risking my life. Robbie's a life risker, daredevil, a showman. Uh -huh. There are other motorcycle jumpers around the country, but uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that could sing louder and longer than Elvis Presley. But who the hell gives a damn? That's just the way it is. <laughs> Thought so. I may jump something now, and after you, <laughs> I, after have a little pep talk. I, um, what, what, what of your uh, of your successful jumps are you most proud of? They, they, I never had one. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Excuse me. Huh? Yeah, look, uh, let me s <laughs> see how I can phrase it to you. That way you can understand. There's two parts to every jump. There's uh -huh. a takeoff and a landing. Yeah. I that never missed a takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> The landings were a little tough, though. But well, I, I, um, I, 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 you know, good luck, and and it, it, it sounds weird to me, but I hope it, I wish you well. And, well, it'll uh, be on April 14th, Friday right. night, on uh, Showtime Pay for View Television, and it'll be at the most beautiful hotel and casino and again, in the world. I, I don't, I don't mean to overemphasize this too much, but it's this one, Robbie. It's the <laughs> one without the scratches. Every mother and father that wants to buy a motorcycle for a son or a daughter. Or for themselves. If you don't buy a helmet, one of these beautiful helmets when you buy one, believe me, remember the story about Humpty Dumpty. That's You've right. got to protect your head, you've got to take care of yourselves. That's From all. From Evil Canada, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Good luck, Rob. State legislator slash rodeo clown Steve Homack. We'll be right out.